Hello everyone and welcome to this learning resource exploring some of the psychosocial implications of HIV infection and disease. I'll work through the intended learning outcomes in a moment with you but what I'm hoping you've done is to have checked out the HIV Foundations learning page that I've pre pre um, already presented on Spark. So if you haven't already done that, as soon as you start processing through this page, you will see that there's a link, there's a button that will take you to the H HIV Foundations. So I really encourage you to go through there first, and that gives you clear foundations of different aspects of HIV, whether that's um, in relation to modes of transmission of HIV or the impact on the immune system and how the pathophysiology, the, um, uh, the negative impact of the virus on an untreated person's body can then develop as time goes by. So if you haven't done the HIV Foundations first, I'd encourage you to go there. And then when you're working through this one, we can focus a lot more on the psychological and the social aspects. But even in saying that, when HIV was first labelled, it was first, uh, uh, first identified back in 1981, on the 5th of June 1981, that's when the, first, the, the world first heard that there was this new illness around. And eventually, within a few months, it was uh, labelled as AIDS, the Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome. But it wasn't until another couple of years later, until 1983, that the virus was actually discovered. So unlike these days of COVID, where we've got a name for something and we know automatically uh, which virus is causing it, with HIV it took um, from 1981 to 83 to discover the virus. And even then it was labelled as two different things. So in France, it was being labelled as LAV, the lymphadenopathy associated virus. And in America, it was being called HTLV3, the human T cell lymphotrophic virus type 3. And it wasn't until 1985 that the World Health Organization jumped in and said, right, stop squabbling about names here. Let's call it by one thing. Let's call it HIV, the human immunodeficiency virus. But those very early days, even before it was first labeled as AIDS, for a couple of months before then, it was actually called GRID, uh, and please forget I've even told you that, but GRID is the gay-related immune deficiency because it was first identified amongst gay, bisexual and other men who have sex with men. And because of that, it was assumed to have been a gay issue. But that's a really good point to make because it's right from those early days onwards that this isn't just a physical condition. It's not just, oh, a virus has come into the world. Look at all the stuff about COVID, for example. It's a virus, it's a viral infection. But look at the ways in which some people do try to blame. So for example, um, uh, COVID, like HIV, has crossed from animal species into humans. But look at the way in which some humans are now blaming others for this. So uh, even by calling COVID the Chinese virus, straight away that's labelling, that's negative. It's putting the hackles up in China and it's putting blame in other people's hands. So the same sort of thing happened in those early days of HIV. There was such a blame game going on for individuals and lots of people would say, oh, well, it didn't start with us, it must have started with somebody else. And there was all of that. And therefore the psychological and the social are intimately woven with the pathophysiology of HIV infection and disease. And one other thing that taps into the psychosocial aspects as well is because the majority of people around the world living with HIV have acquired it because of sex. And so many cultures, so many religions, so many languages, so many parts of the world find it difficult to talk about sex and especially about certain aspects of sex, certain sexual orientations or certain practices. And therefore, because of that, everyone with HIV um, therefore has psychological and social dimensions that must be taken into consideration as well. So this isn't just like discovering a physical illness, it's an illness that taps into an individual's psyche, their mental well-being and the social contact between maybe intimate partners, close families or even their whole wider communities and their political governments. So that's how the psychological and the social are really intimate uh, woven into the physical in relation to HIV. Okay, so let's check out the aims for this.
The aim of this session is for us to critically explore some of the psychological and social implications of care relating to those infected with or affected by HIV infection and disease. And what's meant by that is it may not just be the individual that you're caring for, um, for whom you have to consider the psychological and social, but it could be those who are affected by HIV as well. So it could be partners, uh, families, their loved ones. In those early days of HIV, even here in the UK, nurses and medical doctors working in HIV client services would often find that prejudice was pushed towards them as well. And sometimes the stigma, the mark of a condition um, can be applied to others related to it. So that's called stigma by association. So you might find that even people working in those services often needed psychological and social support. As well. So by the end of this session you'll definitely have a good understanding of the foundations of HIV, especially by working through that other Adobe Spark resource that I've prepared for you. And by going through that you'll understand the modes of transmission of HIV and if you know how HIV is passed from one person to another then obviously you know how that can be blocked as well. So when you talk about HIV prevention you need to know how it passes in the first place to know how it can be prevented. But also then the path of physiology. So once HIV gets into a person's body, what does it do to their particular immune cells, their life over time, and what do all the medications do? So that's in the HIV foundations, which is the first half of this current resource you're looking at. And for this one in particular, we'll focus more on the social and the psychological and look at how they can be impacted. Again, in individuals, their close loved ones, families, and their wider societies and peoples as well. Okay, so welcome to all of this, and I hope you have some uh, really good learning opportunities by going through the resources I've put here for you. Mm -hmm.